Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new thing Paul and I are trying out. It is called P versus D, Paul versus Destin, where we argue to the death. No. Only one. That's no, not just what kidding. It's called. No, it's uh, PVD, like PVP <laughs> and PVE. That's why I said that. Yeah, <laughs> we're not arguing to the death. <laughs> oh, oh about okay. this, apparently. So, <laughs> no. Uh, on today's episode, we're going to be talking about Anthem, Anthem 2.0, and why it failed. That's going to be our first topic of conversation. These are just going to be quick one-offs where we sort of talk about sort of evergreen topics and just our memories of it and. What happened? Paul, what the heck happened with Anthem? Why do you think it just didn't hit the mark? So many stages of failure, and it's a shame because there was a lot good to it. And I, I think it did have potential, but the first thing it failed on was the launch. It had the traditional um, ultra, ultra rocky launch where there were so many technical problems at launch that it made a very poor first impression. And I think that just really kind of set things off on the wrong foot. Um, they did not have an end game built up in mind at all uh, when the game launched. And that was something that had to be kind of gradually patched in later. And they never really kind of got all the way there, even to that. And that was going to be part of their big revamp. But, and then they didn't really even deliver on like the Bioware story that they're like, okay, this is going to be a looter of the story, like for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, and they got like good facial capture on I'll give them that. But I don't think anyone remembers that much coherent <laughs> stuff coming out of the Anthem story. So it just, it didn't really work on most fronts, even though it did some very specific things, right? Which we can, I guess, get to later, but <laughs> yeah, this is, this is the reveal asset where they were sort of showing off everything that it can do. And uh, at, as you remember, the city streets were nowhere near this clean. The game was chugging even on 2080 This was that guy in the final game? I don't even remember. Uh, I don't remember, <laughs> yeah. And this I guy was cut, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't, he didn't make the cut. Sorry, freelancers. Yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah, I, I was really, really stoked about this. And you know what? It, it had a lot of good going for it. But I think you're right. I think those server issues at the out of the gate – and they never really got cleared up or solidified during that whole weekend window when they were doing the beta. And a lot of people right away were like, ooh. And then I believe it was, what was it, Tyrant Mine? Or what was the first, the stronghold that we ran like forever with the big spider? Well, that, that was Tyrant Mine. Yeah, yeah so, I'm pretty sure. There's so, Tyrant something. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so we ran Tyrant Mine like 900 times during the beta. And then the game comes out. And it turns out that's the most effective thing to farm. So <laughs> like content wise, we ended up just rolling that over and over and over again. Uh, well, that's like one problem, but never fixed. Because even when they added more stuff, like there was only there was always only like one most efficient thing to do. It was either that stronghold or then later it was a different stronghold, which mm -hmm. was like the final mission of the game, I think was the most efficient to farm for a while. And then when Cataclysm finally showed up, it was Cataclysm. And that was like what you did and anything else you weren't doing. I think Cataclysm arrived and like it was only dropping, I think it was only dropping the new loot and like mm -hmm. only dropping the highest power gear at that point. So like you literally could not do anything but farm <laughs> Cataclysm. So yeah, some of the decisions were just like what. And what Cataclysm was nothing like what they show at the end of this trailer here. Cataclysm, like where you fly into a storm and something crazy. You just fly to a new area and then you collected oh, some stuff. Then you fought yeah. the boss. Yeah, they showed it. They teased it at the end. Remember? And we thought, oh, it's going to be like raids. And you're going to fly around in your Iron Man suit or whatever. <laughs> uh, I do want to. I do want to discuss the things that we liked because this early footage does a good job of showcasing the flight mechanics. I think the flight mechanics were probably one of the strongest things in the game to the point where Avengers ended up stealing it for Iron Man. Right. Yeah. So I, Wait, I was, was, this, was this the fake trailer though? Remember yeah. how they got in trouble for just totally faking the E3 reveal. So that was this. Yeah, that's this. Uh, that's what we're watching right now. <laughs> and it's sort of interesting. To fair, it does kind of look, like, I don't know. I don't think it's like that exaggerated, maybe, but that's still kind of a crap thing to do. <laughs> yeah, it, it does not look this good. It looks good, but I'm yeah. seeing it in a very tiny window. So maybe I'm, I'm missing the finer details. I, I would say that is one thing it did well was marketing. I really did. I did like the, the look of the world. No, besides, <laughs> besides lying. Um, <laughs> I did like the look of the world. I still maintain that the some of the armor design and especially the armor texturing and the layering 
And all the customization they did with armor is probably the best in the entire genre, like of, of looters. I've never seen anything really come close to that. Like Destiny's crawling that way with Transmog and some of the new shaders and stuff, but Anthem, like with the, the stickers and the, the texturing and stuff for the armor, that was something fantastic. Uh, everyone says flying, but my problem with the flying was always the heat meter. And like eventually, eventually they patched it so you would you would use so little heat, it didn't really matter. But mm-hmm. that was like a big thing at the time where I like when Avengers says Iron Man, there's no heat meter. So you can just fly around like Iron Man, do whatever you want. Whereas Avengers kept having you land or fly under a waterfall or something. Uh, but when you were flying, that was really fun. Yeah, in Anthem. Uh, I would always use the skip dash sort of thing that was discovered with the Ranger early on. You would jump, dash, melee, dash, melee, and you could like traverse faster than you would if you were flying. And that's just something I just started doing everywhere because all, all the players who were, who I were totally playing missed the game it, like, like World Line Zero skating in yeah, Anthem. Or... Yeah, basically. <laughs> it, it was pretty fun, though. Yeah, okay, so like this, this part wasn't in the full game. For absolutely sure. <laughs> was not in the game. There's no like flame effects from a, a ship yeah. that fell down. Um, <laughs> it was interesting. I like the combo mechanic that the, that was sort of a holdover mm-hmm. from Mass Effect Andromeda. And later on, when they added more weapons and sort of some more interesting weapon variety a little bit, they they leaned into that. Like they made your baton or whatever for the ranger able to prime or detonate. And I, I really like that. What did you what did you think about the combo system? The combo system was great. That was definitely one of the best aspects of it. And it, it only got better in time because they added so many more things. And I think I think they made everything a combo or a primer or a detonator eventually. So, like, before there was some gear that wouldn't do either, it would just do damage, but, like, you would never pick that in favor of something that could be a combo. And then certain legendary weapons would be primers or detonators eventually, Uh, and they just, they really did a good job with that system. And, like, it was from Mass Effect, I mean, we see other games, like Genshin Impact's entire gameplay mechanic is based around kind of a combo system, uh, just with different elemental effects combining. And I, I think that was one thing it got very right. Combat was, like, I don't know if it was like perfect, and I, I did like the flight-based, uh, action-based combat better than like it being a cover shooter. Um, mm-hmm. One thing that always bothered me was like the enemies felt weirdly small. Like there were these like little tiny army men. Mm-hmm. Like, like, like they never felt like real kind of threats outside of the giant monsters. So that was the weird thing about combat for me. Do, do you remember when um, Cataclysms came to the game and they looked like this? That was really cool. Oh wait, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, the storm. Two, okay, yeah. I did. I liked the mechanics of Cataclysm. Like, I know the Cataclysm wasn't remotely what they hinted it would be, mm-hmm. but I think mechanically that was kind of an interesting mode, and I, I'm I would be fine with other looters adopting something like that uh, with the different like secrets and puzzles and stuff, like interspersed with combat to like get a score. I think that's a cool kind of type of activity. It just shouldn't be like the only thing you run forever and ever and ever. Yeah. Uh... Man, I really, really wanted this game to be good. I, I did enjoy the different different javelins and being able to fly around and everything. So the next question I wanted to ask you was, like, did it ever have a chance? Once I think we, it did. Well, we know the story behind the development, right? So they were sort of, they had to come out. And I think the fact that they had to come out is what hurt them. How, how could they have succeeded is sort of my question then. Where... Where they got lost, and I think the moment they lost it was after launch, when it was in the state it was in, and instead of tripling down on it like immediately and like keeping the entire team intact and like going as hard as they have been going so far, they pulled like uh, some people left. They pulled a bunch of major people off of it, threw them to Dragon Age, threw them to Mass Effect, and then I, I mean, the team just all it did was shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink, and then it got down to what thirty people doing this reboot. It's like, mm-hmm. what are you going to do with? 30 people to reboot this triple a game that i'm sure took hundreds of people thousands of hours like millions of hours to make in total labor and if i i think people could have forgiven them for launch because almost all looters go through that initial launch period of like this is totally screwed up that's totally screwed up got to patch a bunch of things like most most even the successful looters today went through that period diablo destiny division one and like people will give you X amount of time, but they didn't deliver. They started missing their deadlines immediately. They had this roadmap set up. They they did like one thing on the first roadmap out of like 30 things they listed. And yeah. then it just, it got away from them and they were too busy fixing the problems with not enough people. 
And then it just, they didn't have the manpower to do kind of a massive turnaround or like debut uh, a huge expansion or something in the fall to bring people back. They just, they just never did anything like that. And the biggest thing they ever did was Cataclysm, which was like, again, I liked it, but it was one mode. Like, and that mm-hmm. was never going to do it. It's it's so interesting to look back because if you remember, they brought back Casey Hudson and, you know, I, I've met a lot of people that worked on Anthem because we did IGN content for Anthem and I was, I was really, really stoked on this game. But then eventually after a while, you're like, oh man, it's not working out. And I feel like something happened with Andromeda in, in a similar vein where like you can just tell something's off within the development process. And then Anthem, like it's really close, but it's not quite where it needs to be. And the fact that they were bringing all this staff on right near the, like, like the last year, what are you, are you really going to be that impactful with your design in that last year uh, of the process? You you have to be pretty far along to launch a game that's trying to compete with like destiny an established franchise. And, yeah. I just, I, I, because of the development stuff that we know about, because of the Trier article, I just I don't think they ever had a chance to to hit the way that they wanted to hit out of the gate. They they reset too late in the game. They they reshuffled too late in the game, and that alone, like it takes a while when you switch positions in a company to get back into the role of things. Like I was just a dad for a month and a half, and <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to like do the IGN thing all over again and getting back into the role. So. Yeah, I mean, that's just my thought on it. I, I, I don't know that. I think they reset too late, and that really, really shot them in the foot. But what I did be- they do for you? It was a year and a half, like, yeah, of of deliberation of whether they should do a reboot or not. Like that, that alone is too long. Like, mm-hmm. uh, Andromeda did some some pretty interesting stuff with uh, storytelling. There's there's some good story there. I don't think it's as strong as the original trilogy, but you know, Andromeda had that, and then. Anthem definitely figured out character animation and character facial stuff. And there is there are some good story moments within the Anthem universe. So I have high hopes for further down the line when we get Dragon Age or when we get Mass Effect or whatever. Uh, the, ne- the last question I have for you is this whole 2.0 talk and how they were going to change the menus and everything. Do you think it ever could have worked? Like how how much more time do you think they would have needed with their 30 man team to make 2.0 something that would have been able to like launch Anthem and have it be received positively? Like 40 years, I don't know. <laughs> like the 30 man team, that's the thing. It's like it's all conditional. Like if they had 900 people working on this like full steam, sure, maybe they could have thrown out a, a huge expansion or an Anthem 2 or or something that learned all the lessons and changed all the things that are going to change. But like this, it never made sense to me in the first place that they were like even thinking about doing a reboot with how low the player population had dropped and how much stuff would need to change to make that happen. And like, I was following the development and like, it wasn't just like, okay, we're going to change the loot system. It's like, here's a new faction. Here's a new area. Like there's a new mission. Like it sounded like a total, like a, a major expansion. And I don't know how you do that with, a team of 30 and then the rumor was like okay well, we're the, debating whether to triple the team to 90 it's like no you gotta have you gotta throw <laughs> everything at this and yeah like, you know people talk about like all these turnaround stories like oh anthem could be final fantasy 14 or no man's sky but like the thing those games had in common was like the full weight of the studios like going as hard as they possibly could at this one specific goal or like destiny two, like, you know, or destiny one trying to get the taken King or Diablo fixing itself with Reaper's souls. Like that was all of that team was doing for a very long time. So like, I, you know, God bless those 30 people, but I, I don't, they never had a chance if that's all the resources that were being devoted to this, that, that never made sense to me. I mean, long and long and short of it is I agree with you. And I think that's what EA was realizing. Also, they probably looked at the team that they've dedicated to this challenge and they're like, okay, look, you guys have come up with some great concepts. And I think that's all that they were doing. They were probably setting up the dominoes to be like, these are the th- ways that we want to change the game and here's how we think they're feasible. And then EA's like, okay, do we throw 300 people at this and get it done and launch Anthem 2.0 or do we not do that? And at the end of the day, they made the decision not to. And and personally, as much as it pains me to say this because I did enjoy, enjoy Anthem, uh, I think they made the right call. I just think business-wise, relaunching Anthem is not the way to go. If they're going to do Anthem, 
do Anthem 2 or something. I I don't know. I, I just think we never see the there, Anthem franchise. It's poison. No IP, there's no IP yeah. to save. Like, yeah. that's the thing. Is That's the other thing about, like, Final Fantasy or Diablo. Like, those are huge storied IPs. So no one wanted Diablo 3 to be, like, the death of the franchise or Final Fantasy to screw up its MF. Like, but Anthem, there was no there was no basis there. They wanted it to be the next, you know, pillar in their catalog. But, like, if you're going to save an IP now, it makes the most sense to save Mass Effect and bring it back from the brink because you know how attached are people to mass effect people oh. die for that series like and so that's why i a long time ago i didn't really understand why anthem wasn't just a, a mass effect game and like kind of an open world loot based expansion of the mass effect world like that that seemed like a logical place to go to me but that they wanted to start a separate kind of similar sci-fi franchise with fewer aliens or something so <laughs> There was just no IP to save, so that was another reason to not really bother with it. And it just like I don't I, I don't think anyone lost their jobs over this. They just moved them to the teams that are actually building games that are going to come out. So I, I hope so. It, I know it, Mark Mark Dara and uh, Casey Hudson are well, no longer there, but yeah. yeah, I mean Casey Hudson's probably flying <laughs> airplanes or something. That's what he does for fun. And Mark I mean, Dara is posting sure. his sledding videos. So. <laughs> He seems there's happy. a lot of stuff going on at Bioware that we don't quite know about because it doesn't seem to be the most stable of places with all the rotating in and out. But I, I, I don't know. I, hopefully the teams they have together now are, are coherent and going to get it done. I agree. I'm really, really hopeful. And you brought up Mass Effect. We know Mass Effect Legendary Edition is right around the corner. It's looking really good so far based on what we've seen. And if, if they're just doubling down on, OK, we need to get Dragon Age right. We cannot have another Anthem or an Andromeda. It just can't happen. Right. And then they they continue to restore good faith by doing sort of the thing that they that EA said they would never do and re-releasing the, the trilogy with improvements. Um, I think it's on the same engine, but they're they're improving it. That has me really excited mm -hmm. for the future of Bioware. But Anthem, it was fun. I, I got a couple hundred hours out of my gameplay with Anthem and enjoyed most of it. Um, but we knew you so little. <laughs> you, you tried, um, and like it 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 sucks because like some of these games, I'm just like, okay, Godfall. I looked at it, I played it for like a week, and I'm like, no, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's nothing here. <laughs> like yeah. I'm, I'm out. But Anthem, like you could see it, like you could you could see like it's almost thirty percent of how you know of what it could have been, and it's mm -hmm. uh, but it, it would have taken too much work to get it there. Yeah. Hey, Paul, thank you so much for doing this with me. This is like a new podcast thing. I'm like, hey, do you want to try and do a show? Because we we've tried yeah. it a few times. We're given this one topic show where we just sort of talk <laughs> out industry stuff that has YouTubers happened and, now we can do shows yeah. <laughs> right well uh yeah thanks for trying it out and let us know what you think in the comments below this is sort of an experiment where we talk about uh, larger topics and kind of just go to town on them but thanks paul and thank you for watching we'll see you next time bye everybody Hey, I hope you like that episode of PVD. It's sort of a pilot thing Paul and I are trying out. Our podcast for this channel where we talk about singular topics for longer periods of time. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you did, please consider subscribing. You can subscribe, obviously, by hitting the subscribe button, but hit that bell too to get notifications. And if you really like the channel, you can become a member or a supporter. I don't know what it's called. I'm trying it out. It's a YouTube thing they offer. <laughs> So I turned it on, but uh, yeah, you'll get early access before anybody else to all my videos, and I'll be sure to turn monetization off. Thank you to those of you who have supported. I'm going to put your names right here, and I'll catch you for the next video. Bye, everybody. See you soon.